yes, it's a Monday, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. We did get to trade, didn't we? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the last Monday of June. It is the 24th. Ay, ay, ay. Time is flying by. Now, you know what we do on this show. I like to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every single market. There is no lack of penny stocks. The problem is sorting through all those penny stocks, trying to find a hot penny stock. Now, my definition of a hot penny stock is first finding a hot chart. I want to find a chart that looks like it's ready to run. It's got a breakout setup or it's had a strong run for three or four days or it's got some big bounces. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through all those press releases, all those filings looking for a catalyst. If I can find a hot piece of news to match my hot chart, voila, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. And those are the sort of stocks we talk about on this show. And I've got one to share with you right now. This is MetaVesco, ticker MVCO. I did find this one by looking at the chart. She is set up beautifully right now. Her 200-day SMA just came on the four-hour chart. She was underneath it. And what do I always tell you? When a new SMA comes onto the chart, eight out of 10 times, the price gravitates towards it. And that's what it's doing. The price is climbing right now, reaching towards that 200. But we've got lots of news. We've got lots of catalysts to get this thing to push through that 200 and run. So MetaVesco, she finished the day at almost eight cents and she was up a little over 16% today. Now this is a hot penny stock on the OTC. She is on the pink tier, the bottom tier, the most riskiest tier on the OTC. And they're risky because of one factor primarily, lack of validated information. This is mostly the only validated information you're gonna get with pinks a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Their disclosures, those are numbers they disclose to us, but they haven't been gone through by an auditor or CPA. They're not validated numbers. Their news presses, take them with a grain of salt, folks. I've lost a lot of money on news presses with pinks. Trust the filings. So this is about the best we're gonna get. We've got two verified pieces of information. She is current, she's looking okay. So what is MetaVesco about? Well, we're not gonna to go to her website because there's not a whole lot of information there. So we're gonna start with this description and I'll go off from there. MetaVesco is a Web3 blockchain enterprise and a digital asset innovator. The company generates revenue as a crypto liquidity provider via decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap and the company farms tokens via proof of stake protocols. Now, if you're into crypto, you probably understand what I just said there. I really don't trade crypto that much. I got into it a couple years ago, but I don't understand it all. The company also has Bitcoin mining operations in Texas and Kentucky. And as the news tells us, they are also now in Iowa. The company also invests in promising NFT projects and virtual land, including other side meta. In June of 2023, the company acquired Boring Brew, a specialty coffee company utilizing owned and licensed NFT IP as unique packaging. So there's not a whole lot I can say about their uh, crypto stuff. We'll get a little more information about that from the news. We're bouncing over here to the company's website so I can let you know we are not gonna be coming to the company's website. There isn't any information here, folks. It is so general. They tell us that they are involved with Bitcoin mining. That's all the information. They tell us they're involved with Boring Brew. That's all the information. And they tell us about their management. That's all the information. So we're really not gonna get a whole lot here at the website. So what I've done is I've jumped on over here to Google and I've done a search on their images. Now, we're not going to do a whole lot of talking about the crypto because I don't understand a whole lot about crypto, but we do have some news about that. I want to talk about Boring Brew. This is one of the new companies they got just at the end of last year, and they brag about their superior coffee. I've never tried it. I would like to. But what they really brag about is their packaging. They have limited edition packaging using NFT IP. 
what we're talking about is pictures from NFTs. You see this top row? You probably recognize what these are. These are Boring Ape Yacht Club NFT pictures. It's not the NFTs themselves. They print the pictures on the bags. They do this for a certain amount of time and then they stop printing that and they will never print it again. So these are collectible items. Now, just so we're clear here, this company does not own the IP for the Boring Ape Yacht Club NFTs. They've got some deal going on. I haven't found that deal, but they're not theirs. And I'm not sure if they have other deals because I see other bags of coffee with different types of NFTs on them that are not Boring Ape Yacht Club. So they could have other deals as well. So this is their primary product that they are working with right now. I don't know how well it's doing except to look at the numbers. So let's go do that. Taking a look at the relative volume for the company today. Not big numbers, but it is an increase. She jumped about 400% in her volume, going from an average of about 37,000 shares a day for the last 30 days. Definitely under the radar. And jumping today to about 126,000 shares. It's not a lot of shares, but it's an increase. It's starting to grow. And that's when you want to look at a company when it's starting to grow, when it's not just laying in bed anymore. Now, since we're talking about shares on the OTC, let's take a look at the tally for the entire OTC. On the OTC market, we have 12,373 different companies. Today, we generated $1.6 billion for all the shares moved. It isn't very much, folks. That's dire. And to show you how dire it is, that's how many shares were moved on the market today. 2.5 billion. That may sound like a lot of shares to you, but do you realize that before COVID, we were averaging over 60 billion shares a day? So we are way, way, way down. A good day is anything over 5 billion. Today is half a good day. So this company got 126,000 out of that 2.5 billion. Take a look at the share structure for Metavesco. Can't complain about that. Outstanding share count is only 70 million. I don't know what the insiders own. We don't have the unrestricted shares here, which is where I normally lean to for my float. But I got a buddy. He tells me I'd be better off leaning on this number if it's here. The DTC is where the float flows through. That's what your transfer agent does. Every time you buy or sell something, the shares have to move. This is where they flow through. That's the pipe. Right now, it says we're just under 20 million. That could be our float. If it isn't, well, the best I can tell you is it won't be over the outstanding number of 69 million. Market cap for MVCO, we are closing in on 5 million, currently at 4.7. Financials for the company. Oh, whew. all right. Things are changing. Things are changing. That's what we're looking for. They were really bad four years ago. Coming out of the gate, she was running at $70,000 deficit. That's <laughs> She wasn't doing good. That was four years ago in 2020, and we know it's thousands and not just $70 because they tell us we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2021, she jumped her price up. Now she's only down 45,000. 2022, we're in positive mode now, 69,000. And then we drop down to 29,000. Looking at our quarterly reports. Now that's looking a lot better. Actually, that's looking really good. We were at minus $11,000 a year ago. Jumped up into the positive zone to five. Then jumped to 18, 47, 183. These are nice big jumps. No, it's not a lot of money, but it is big increases. And that's what we're looking for. Growth starting to happen. Do you know when you plant a bamboo tree, you can give it water, give it sunlight. Two, three, four years go by. You're doing everything perfectly and it hasn't grown. Not one extra leaf, not one extra inch. It hasn't grown. Fifth year, all of a sudden things start to happen. And in one month, it will be 30 feet tall. It will grow 12 inches a day. So when things start to change, keep your eyes on them because they can change fast. Let's take a look at the balance sheet for Metavesco. Not much money in the bank. Thank God for three zeros. We got 39,000 in the bank. Ugh, total assets is low, 640,000. 
Well, I was thinking liabilities were going to be a lot higher. They are higher than our assets, but not real high. They're up there at just under 900,000. So we are holding stockholder deficit in this company of about a quarter million dollars. Take a look at our disclosures. Haven't got anything here since 2023 and all of our financials are up to date. So what we need to do is go take a look at that news. So we've got lots of news here, lots of different types of news. And it's not like old news isn't worthy anymore. I think it's building up wave upon wave. I like what I'm reading here and I'm gonna share this with you. And we're gonna jump into one, two, three, four, five pieces of news. You know me, we're only gonna bullet it. Starting off down here, this is all the way back in October of last year. Metavesco's Boring Brew Specialty Coffee featuring NFT artwork now available at Walmart's, walmart.com. That is to say it's not in the stores, but it's on the site. You can go to walmart.com and you can buy it from their site, but you can't find it in the stores yet. But that's a good start. Then here in November, Metavesco to acquire Labor Smart Inc. operating assets. Now, I want to dive into each one of these. So let's just do that right now. That very first one, Metavesco to acquire Labor Smart Inc. operating assets. The company, Metavesco, tells us today they announced it would acquire all operating assets from Labor Smart Inc., a Delaware corporation. On September 26, 2023, the company announced it would acquire certain assets and IP from Epic Labor as part of its diversification and expansion strategy into the staffing sector. That's two companies, two. We have got Labor Smart and Epic Labor. Simultaneous closures, the acquisition of both Labor Smart and Epic Labor assets will take effect simultaneously on January 1st. Hold on though. Comprehensive asset and client transfer. This is important and I don't understand it. This includes assignment of service agreements with 4,895 current and formerly active clients with high profile names such as the Kansas City Chiefs and the Kansas City Royals. Well, aren't those sporting teams, professional sporting teams? So some more due diligence needs to be done here. Now, before I go any further, I wanna jump back to the news because right here, December 29th, just before they close it, right? January 1st, they halt it. They tell us in this, they are not going to close the deal January 1st, but they are going to close the deal. They tell us that those two companies were having problems right at that point in time. They said it was a seasonal thing and they wanted that to pass by and they'd come back to it. And they definitely were still going to close on these, just not when they originally said so. Jumping into that next piece of news. Metavesco board approves three for two forward split. Forward, meaning we get free shares. They're going to give us free shares. They tell us here that Metavesco has approved a three for two forward stock split. For every two shares you own, they'll give you three shares. So basically you're getting one third more shares for free. The company will not affect a forward split until it is cleared by FINRA that's the catch. It hasn't been approved yet, which is good. We haven't missed it yet. So this came out December 19th and I haven't seen any more, but I haven't done a deep dive. I haven't gone through every single filing to see if they've gotten a response from this. But when they do, it is going to happen and it's going to happen very quickly. And I like forward splits. You don't normally see forward splits on cheap stocks. The price will fall after this split, it will fall one third of this price and go down. Hopefully it'll come back afterwards because people will be happy they got free shares. You know what happens after a reverse split, price goes way up. We should be happy our stocks are expensive. No, but you don't have any shares left. Then you sell your shares cheaper than you paid for them because you're upset. You can't separate yourself from your emotions. And I'm hoping that's what's going to happen here. People get excited and push the price up because they got free shares in the company. Next piece of news came out December 26th. Metavesco orders additional Bitmain anti-miner 19,000. Uh, no, no. 
Ant Miner S 19K Pro Bit Miners. Can't even read this stuff when it comes to crypto. Metavesco Inc. announced it has ordered an additional 82 Bitmain Ant Miner S 19K Pro Bitcoin Miners for its Iowa fleet. They told us about Texas and Kentucky. Now they're in Iowa as well. Now this next piece of information, I really don't have to share with you, but it blew my mind. I learned something here. Maybe you'll learn something too. Ryan Shadell, CEO of Metavesco Inc. stated, after carefully analyzing our energy consumption and hashing power, it was determined that a adding 82 miners to our fleet would allow the company to access a lower cost tier power supply contract. When these miners come online, I expect our total hosting cost to be reduced by approximately 6.25%. This next line blew my mind. Mr. Shadell continued, with our total input cost per Bitcoin produced, it is $21,000. And with Bitcoin prices holding above 40,000, this was an easy investment to make. Did you hear what he just said? It cost them $21,000 to mine one Bitcoin and they get 40,000 for it. It's not like it's free energy consumption. Who's making out like a bandit? The electric companies, energy companies, they're making out like bandits. $21,000 it cost them for one Bitcoin. I had no clue. Next piece of news. Oh, I lost my highlights. Metavesco announced a stock buyback program. This came out February 2nd. They tell us that the company has authorized a common stock buyback program of up to $1 million. Uh, the company is authorized to repurchase up to $1 million of its common stock. The repurchase program will commence immediately and will conclude February 1st, 2025. So between now and February, they should be buying a million dollars worth of stock. Uh, boy, that's a lot of shares, isn't it? Um, divide that into a million dollars. Even after the, the forward split, the price will get cheaper. So that's even more shares. Wow. And how many shares did they have, by the way? I can't remember. They've got 69. And we're, we're going to add one third more shares to this. That should put it close to about 110 million shares, somewhere around there, I'm guessing. And bouncing into that last piece of news, this came out June 18th, and this is a catalyst. Metavesco explores potential acquisition of historic South Carolina distillery. The company is exploring the potential acquisition of one of the oldest distilleries in South Carolina. The company has begun a formal due diligence process and is preparing to move quickly towards drafting a letter of intent. We are very excited about the opportunity to acquire this award-winning distillery. The facilities are top-notch and the team's commitment to excellence is evident. This acquisition would align perfectly with our strategy to expand our portfolio with high-quality brands. So some of the information that's missing here is a date of closing. We don't have that. Not even a hint, not a quarter. We don't know what company it is. Now, I was trying to figure it out by doing a little bit of research on Google and just putting in South Carolina distillery, old, very old. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of old distilleries in South Carolina, so I didn't make any headway there. So we don't know exactly what company it is. We don't know when they're going to close it, but it's something that's on their agenda right now. Plus, we've got two other companies that was on their agenda at the beginning of the year and they put on hold. Maybe enough time's gone by that they're going to do something there. Our revenues are kicking up and they're about ready to do a forward split once FINRA approves it. It all sounds good to me and it sounds like the chart has lots of reasons to be moving. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Now we get to do my favorite part of due diligence, the charting. We're over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim, my favorite playground. And of course, we are looking at ticker MVCO. This is Metavesco. Got her opened up to a one day, one year chart. As you can see, looking at that 200 day moving average, she has been in a serious decline the entire year. But that is not to say she's been in a downtrend the entire year. Truth of the matter is she was in a downtrend for a few months. 
Then she had this serious plunge, and I have no idea why. She dropped from 66 cents all the way down to 6 cents. And off of that, she really didn't do much. She had a jump, she had a bump, but for the most part, she is just going sideways, biding time, waiting, waiting for that 200-day SMA to get closer. Now, I do have a whole bunch of SNRs already drawn on the board, supports and resistances. We'll get a better look at these when we come down to the lower time frames. Up here, we have a resistance at 66, 67 cents. This is the top of our gap. This is what we're working on filling. That's our profit margin right there. And the dead center of this is what we're pushing towards first. Now to find that, what you do is you grab your Fibonacci and on a drop, a big dip, you wanna poke the top first and go down to the bottom. Why? Look up here at the top. You see how the lines are climbing right there? If we did this in reverse, the lines would go at the bottom. Well, I'm looking for a recovery. I want my price to climb, so I want my supports and resistances over my head. So poke the top of the drop and then come down to the bottom of the drop and poke there. What you end up with are these lines, which are algorithmic supports and resistances that you can use to trade on. The price will respect them. Even though these are not attached to any historical price point, they are valid. Now, if you look at the ones we've got here, we have one just up underneath the 200 and all the rest are over. So we're not gonna be getting into these right now or anytime soon here, hopefully soon, but not right now. So I am gonna take this away. But once we break that 200 day SMA, I'm gonna to wanna to run back here and put that Fibonacci up and see where my price is gonna go. Looking at our oscillators on our yearly chart, our PPO is climbing. Our MACD is climbing. Our RSI is climbing. Everything looks really good on our yearly chart. Let's come on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Okay, this is what I was looking at when I found this stock. I noticed the 200-day SMA. It's brand new. Just came on the board. And as I have shared with you on many occasions, when a new SMA comes on the board, what we see eight out of 10 times roughly is the price gravitate to the new SMA. And it doesn't matter if the price is above it or below it, it goes to that SMA. Now it doesn't necessarily stay there, sometimes it does, but most of the time it just tags it and then goes back to whatever it was it was doing. So we do have it closing in on the 200 right now, but maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it's not closing in on the 200 because it's new. Maybe it's closing in on that 200-day SMA because it's getting ready to break out, right? She was going flat here. Here's our 200 haul. Here's our 200-day SMA, and our price is right in the middle. Our 200 haul is blue and pushing up. This is when I expect a breakout. When I see my haul blue climbing, when I see my red 200-day SMA coming down and my price in the middle, I am confident that I'm going to see a breakout. And that's exactly what this looks like we got going on. She was down here at a support of 0.63 cents. She is now tapping about 8 cents. And I've got one here at 9.8 cents right at our 200 at this point in time. Volume is nothing special to talk about, but our oscillators are looking pretty good. Let me zoom in on this MACD so we can see what's happening there. Uh, yes, look at that. So our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing. This is a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. You want your blue line on top of the other one pushing up. The difference between the two, your PPO is percentage price oscillator. It works with a percentage of the price where the MACD uses the whole price. And our RSI is climbing. That is pushing up. It is at 63 right now. I'm liking the four-hour chart. I'm really liking it. Coming on down to our 20-day, one-hour. Well, isn't that a perfect chart? I mean, really, that is a perfect chart because you got a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. It's climbing from one end to the other. It's perfect. We're going from 3.1 cents. Wow up to 7.9 cents. That is a beautiful climb that's over 100% right there. 
What is that? 3.1. That's closer to 150% right there. And it looks like she is still climbing, floating on her nine-day SMA with the other SMAs all curved up and starting to climb as well. Osculators. PPO is strong. Been pushing up for three days. MACD is strong. It too has been climbing for three days. And our RSI is strong. But right now she's cooled off and she's going sideways. Not a danger signal, but she has cooled off just a little. Take a look at that five day, five minute. Another perfect chart. Going from 4.2 cents up to that 7.9. Just shy of 100% gains. She's jumping up. She's gotten on top of this support. You can see she bounced off of it. Came under this, underneath this resistance, which could be a wee bit high. I ballpark these on the four hour, so it's tough sometimes. So we are right up there at about eight cents. And now she's going sideways like she did here. It looks like she's ready to climb, folks. Everything is pointed up. Everything is climbing. Osculators are climbing. RSI is still a bit tempted. She's going sideways right now. But look at all the catalysts she's got. We have a forward stock split. We're just waiting for that to be approved by FINRA. Three to two. For every two shares you have, you'll get three shares. They're going to increase it by one third. They've got a deal for a distillery that they're working on currently. They've got a deal on two staffing companies that should be coming back into the picture. And their revenues are starting to take big jumps right now. Everything looks good to me for this company. But of course, it needs some more due diligence. So go do that. <laughs> Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.